as we get further along in our use of and development of our Blackboard resources, it becomes more obvious that the next step is to allow um, observers in to look at our courses. And really what that means in the context of the school district of Waukesha is that each student is directly connected to their parent or guardian counterpart. And so when you enroll a student into your courses without doing anything additional, you are actually enrolling their parents or guardians as they um, are named in the student information system. And so it's important to understand that as a teacher in Blackboard, we have a lot of different ways that we can control what is viewed and when it's viewed within Blackboard. We obviously can create an entire course and um, have, you know, for instance, in, in the first semester, only show the links that are relevant for the first semester and in the second semester, you know, hide those links and show the new ones. But we also have the abil ability to um, show only certain parts of our course to our observers, or better known as parents in this particular instance. Um, for the purpose of the technology lingo, you need to know with Blackboard, it's important to understand though that parents um, are, are called observers in the Blackboard realm. And that just means that they can't really interact within the course, but they can peer in and observe what is going on in the course, provided you give them access to do so. So this video is going to very quickly show you some places to check to make sure that your parents um, or observers, as they're more aptly called, um, have the access that you want for them to have. The first thing we're going to do is just uh, quickly show you here that when I'm in Blackboard and I go to a content area, when I click on my little uh, downward facing carrot here, You'll notice I only have a few options, rename link, hide link, or delete. That's going to change in just a bit. We're going to go down to our control panel. If your control panel is hidden, like mine is, you need to open that up. And we are going to go to customization, guest and observer access. All right, so you can see here that by default, my guests were, no, they may not have access, and my observers may not have access. Just so you understand the difference between the two, a guest is somebody that you would invite into the course, maybe to, to be a guest lecturer or a guest teacher or an aide. Um, they have some availability, but again, we can get down to the level and say they could have instructor roles in some places and they could have, um, you know, no access in other places. So generally, we won't use a guest a whole lot within the district, but our observers, again, remember, are our parents. And so I'm going to click Yes, Allow Observers. Now, some of you may be saying, but I don't necessarily need my parents to have access to everything. When I come back here to my Content 2 and I click my Edit Arrow, you'll notice that I have a new option here, and that is Permit Observers. And this is how we go through and keep um, observers in the loop of what they need to see as opposed to perhaps seeing everything. So if I were to log in as an observer right now, Content 2 would not be available to me. Even though you see it here as an instructor and the students see it there, the observer roles, which again are our parents, wouldn't see them if they, if they log in. So for instance, if you're hearing from parents that they can't see any of your stuff or the, the Blackboard course seems to be blank, this would be the first place I would check. I'd first go and make sure that the observers have access and we just walk through that. The next thing I would do is go into the specific areas I want them to have access to, click our downward facing chevron here, and I would click permit observers. The alternative of that, Deny observers. And I'm, you can see I'm switching between the two. So we go back to permit observers there. Okay. Now you, as you can see, won't have the permit observers or deny observers option if down in the control panel again, we go to guest and observer access. If that was selected to no, you would not have that option. But it's yes, so you do. Let's see. All right, here's another one. Reading workshop. I'm going to permit my observers for that one. And Writer's Workshop, we're not there yet, so I'm going to deny observers at this point. And some tools we don't have access to. 
Um, for instance, you see contact info. That's a tool within uh, Blackboard. So just one more thing, if, uh, if you're interested in it, is to come on down and um, go into Tool Availability, so Customization, Tool Availability. And here you see all the different tools that are available. Most people don't even realize that all these tools are available in Blackboard, and some of them make sense and some of them don't. But um, here you can see that I have some options and other ap options I don't. So for instance, announcements. I come in and I can determine whether guests and observers can see options or can see announcements or not. So I'm going to make announcements not available to my observers or available to my observers. You can see some of these are grayed out, not even a choice for you. Blackboard help, not available to my observers or my guests. Can they see calendar? No, well, that's up to you. If you're using, for instance, a Google Calendar and you don't want them to even remotely have any chance of seeing calendar stuff um, other than the Google Calendar, because remember that's an outside tool, you could select this and then all they would see would be the Google Calendar in place. So again, you can go through and play with these and again when you're done, you click Submit and you're done. So that is uh, permitting observers and guests to log in. Again, I'm Brian. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, beyearlin at walkshaw.k12.wi.us. Sorry about the ringing phone here. And um, we'll see you next time.